All right, everybody, welcome to mock interview number 97. We are glad that you could join us today, May 29th, uh, and are here for this latest edition of our mock interview that we've been mock interview series that we started at the very beginning of the pandemic. My name is Albert of Albert's List, and I will be your host today. With me co-hosting is Corey Hiramoto of careershakers.com. I'll share his LinkedIn here real shortly so you can connect with him. And he is a career coach who interviews and helps people interview for a lot of different roles. And today with us is Jiten, a customer success manager based out of Toronto, Canada. The purpose of this mock interview or the way that we'll do it is actually very simple. Uh, Jiten has shared a job description uh, and Corey will ask interview questions along with whatever is on Jiten's resume. Uh, Jiten will provide a response and there will be feedback given afterwards. For those of you who are watching in the attendees, you can add your own insights, your own thoughts, as well as suggest questions to ask. Without further ado, Corey, over to you. Thank you, everyone. Super excited to be back here again. And we are taking volunteers. I think we're fully booked for the next couple of weeks. But if other folks do want to jump in after Albert does number 100, we are looking for volunteers. So reach out to me or Albert. You can use the chat or our emails and things like that. Um, now, uh, first of all, I always want to give a huge round of applause to everyone who volunteers. And today, G10, thank you so much. We're doing another customer success mock interview practice session today. I put the job description that we're going to be practicing in the chat. Um, it's for Loop. And before we do the mock interview, I want to give everyone a platform to kind of talk about themselves to, to their audience. So Jitan, why don't you give everyone like a non-interview introduction about yourself, and then you can tell them what kind of roles and things you're looking for, where, and if anyone in the community likes your background, is impressed by you, and they, they can reach out with other op opportunities. Sure. So hi, everyone. My name is Jitin. Uh, so I'm currently in Toronto, Canada. Uh, my background has been a bit unconventional because I'm from engineering background and uh, did my master's in management. So uh, I have been into customer success domains. I have been a marketeer. I have been uh, a strategic consultant. Uh, I also had my a startup uh, sort of stint last year for a bit. Uh, got an opportunity to interview with YC as well. Uh, but the business model wasn't, you know, good enough. So we decided to move on. Uh, recently, I'm into, uh, I'm working at a recruiting company. So uh, basically, like I mentioned, it's uh, the background is a bit unconventional. So I've worn uh, quite a bit of like multiple roles and I've worn multiple heads. Uh, but overall, I've, I've uh, sort of included that, that my uh, forte is customer success. Uh, I like uh, working with clients, helping them out. Uh, I've also been a consultant, so I actually uh, can consult a client, uh, which is sort of a part, uh, which is sort of a, like a major part of a customer success uh, domain. Uh, yeah, so I've been working in the agency environments. I've worked at startups. I've worked in tech, uh, tech businesses. So uh, that's a little bit about me. And I'm looking again for similar roles at um, like small scale growth stage startups. And then um, you are based in Toronto. Are you right. open to um, fully remote roles, moving, just Canada? Uh, yeah, so I'm open to remote roles as well. But uh, to be honest, I'm preferring something on-site uh, because I, like, I want to get a feel of on-site work environment. I'm kind of tired of remote work. So, uh, but uh, I'm open, I'm flexible. So it's nothing specific. Sounds good. If anyone likes his background, wants to reach out, we can always put you in touch with Jitan. Okay. Um, I think everyone can see the job description, right? Okay, perfect. So I think this is our third customer success mock interview. So everyone should have a general sense of how these go and what these roles are all about. And I've got my own questions that we can practice. But of course, if anyone in the audience wants us to try some of your questions or you just have questions for me or for Albert or, some, or someone, use the chat function as well. And so how it works is I'll pretend to be the interviewer. So I'll ask an interview question. He will answer. I usually don't give hints unless you get totally stuck. That way you can treat it like a real interview. And then after the end of each question, I'll give feedback like good things, areas of improvement. That way folks who oh, are listening yeah. in can also figure out how you can adjust and practice for your upcoming CSM interviews as well. And I've tweaked some of the questions from last time. So don't worry, they're not the exact same questions, um, even though we are doing another CSM role. Okay, ready to get started? Sure, yeah. Let's do it, okay. So 
Um, can you tell me about a time where you solved a really complex problem for one of your customers? Uh, so yeah, definitely. So basically solving complex problems is uh, part of my job. So uh, I would like to give you an example when I was uh, working at a marketing agency uh, and uh, we had a client, uh, basically the client is a, was an ad tech client uh, and so we were given an assignment. Uh, however, uh, you know, the client came in the last moment and wanted to sort of give another assignment to us, which was out of scope, which was sort of editing a video. Uh, however, again, we were sort of swamped with the work at the same time. Uh, and uh, But again, you know, since it was a startup, uh, we understand the dynamics of a startup that, you know, sometimes everything is at the last moment. Uh, I was the primary point of contact for the client and I was also involved in uh, ma managing the team of video editors. So again, the assignment was given to us. Uh, again, it was the last moment. So, I mean, the work had to be done because the client had to launch a new product the next day. Uh, so I talked to my team, uh, the video editors, and discussed the issue that the client had, uh, that we have to submit this by the end of the day today, anyhow. Uh, so, like, the video editor told me that, you know, like, we all already have a different, uh, we already have a workload from different uh, the other clients that we have to submit. Uh, we are also like close to deadlines for them so uh, i told them you know uh, let's put in extra hours uh, let's see how we can do this and work this out uh, if it's getting uh, like too much of the workload we can outsource some of the video editing for our other clients but this is urgent and this has to be done uh, so i was able to convince the the team uh, and we put in extra hours so we uh, actually went to the client's office uh, stayed there till midnight, about midnight, and uh, finished the work for them. Uh, and the next day, you know, they launched the campaign and they were very happy. Uh, their, their result was, you know, they gave us uh, two more references of like within their own community of different, uh, you know, startups. So at the end, it turned out well, and we were also able to, you know, outsource uh, the other video day editing projects for other clients and were able to meet the other deadlines as well. Okay, um, but you said this was technically out of scope for your contract. So right. why would you want to do the work if it was out of scope? See, the, sometimes it comes with the job as well, right? So uh, like I mentioned, the startup environment is very, very dynamic. Uh, we are a marketing agency. We, are, we, are a small, we were a small scale marketing agency and we understood that, you know, uh, everything is not organized. So we understood that even if it's a last minute, last minute, uh, like ask from the client and out of scope, uh, we did it anyways and you know like sometimes you do have to go to that extra mile uh, for the client and as long as you understand the client and as long as you see the future value uh, from the client you would you can do that for a client so like I mentioned so we got two references uh, from the client so again regarding if it was extra work or out of scope we got something out of it and did those references turn into deals uh, one of them did uh, one of them didn't. So one of them did for uh, like a small term project based marketing. Uh, the other one didn't, but it was uh, again, based on mutual understanding that we were not the right fit. Okay, got it. So um, we'll move on to interview feedback here. So I think this is a good example, primarily because the, the result is great. And it's, I think it's a good context. It's a good example for the context, right? Because this is also a startup. And so knowing that you'll have to do that as well for them to provide that high touch service when you are trying to grow your customer base, I think is actually super relevant and it's probably going to make it a really powerful example. The result was also very good because yes, you did work that was out of scope. Your team had to work late, but you actually ended up getting more, more business from it, which was good. Um, so I, I think we should just add like, instead of saying you got two referrals, right? Just say like you got two referrals and we ended up securing another project, you know, X okay. millions or X thousands, whatever for business purposes, right? That way it's, it's, a, it's a little bit more um, tangible of a result. Right. right. Um, now the part of the story that I think we couldn't maybe enhance, right? Is your, is your value add as a, we'll call it like account manager slash customer success manager, right? Like, right. The influencing part was, 
I think you oversimplified kind of how it goes, right? You were like, hey, we need to get this done. The client wants it and we can outsource some of it. Can you guys work late? Yes. We stayed there till midnight, got it done. Right. But I think it, I think that, that, that downplays your, your skills as to like, I don't know, maybe it was like a project management thing that you helped out with. Maybe the client actually wanted way, way more stuff out of scope. And then you brought them back down to only the video editing or your manager was like, there's no way we're doing this. This is out of scope. We don't have enough resources. And then you had to, you know, convince your manager first. I don't know. Right. But I think if you keep it too simple, it doesn't show too much of the value add that you provide. Right. I understand. Yeah. So I was just uh, trying to answer as shortly as possible. So I didn't want to, you know, make the answer too long. So the interview probably lose the, you know, interest. But I guess you're you're absolutely right. So you, you want to, you know, impress him or her where is entering by, you know, uh, saying whatever value you provided. So, yeah. Yeah. And um, I think this is good too, right? Everyone's probably wondering, like, how long should your answer be? So for these behavioral questions, like, tell me about a time when something, something, or give me an example when something, something, your answer should be somewhere between three and five minutes. Five minutes okay. is okay, as long as everything you're saying is interesting, relevant, and important. And okay. your answer was a little like kind of close to five minutes, but it doesn't even need to be that much longer if you can just add a little bit more of that complexity to it, right? And then there's also some of the details when you record this and practice it again. There are there are there are some details at the beginning that you don't actually need to share, also, right? That are as important. And so if you're worried about going over the five minutes, then I think it's better to trim down some of the stuff at the beginning. And instead, add more of like what you were actually able to do and how you were able okay. to accomplish it. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Uh, da, da, da. All right, sweet. Again, if anyone in the chat has questions for us, throw them in there. Okay. So, can you tell me about a time when you had to use a consultative approach with one of your customers, and what was the result? Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, first of all, I have uh, done quite a few consulting roles uh, for for clients, but I would like to share an experience uh, from my last to last role when I was working in the cashback industry. Uh, so again, so we were selling sort of a digital mall as a franchise. So it was it's not a SaaS typical SaaS product, but it's uh, it's sort of a digital product where. Uh, you know, you're selling it one time and the recurring revenue is sort of the, like the revenue for the, for us. Uh, and one client, uh, they were, you know, struggling with getting their own revenue. Uh, so I sort of uh, prepared a customized strategy for them. And so the client came from a restaurant industry and they recently launched a restaurant uh, and they were using this digital, digital product to increase their footfall and revenue. Uh, so I sort of created a, a new strategy based on the information I had, based on the knowledge I had, that you can use your restaurant and franchise it on a, a scheme that was available from the government. So essentially, uh, it's it's a little complicated scheme, but just to summarize it, the outcome of it was that uh, it was the cheapest restaurant franchise in the state. Uh, through this strategy. So with that, they were able to, you know, sort of grow the restaurant chains from one to 10 within a span of few months. Uh, so that was a, a simplified version of how, you know, I took a consultative approach for a client. So what exactly did you do in terms of uh, helping them better utilize the product? So uh, like I mentioned, so, uh, our product was a one-time sell, but our revenue was as long as clients got more footfall, uh, we also got the revenue. So as long as client is succeeding and getting more customers, we also get more customers. Because the thing is, uh, it's a uh, like we were selling a, a sort of a network of vendors to our clients, and uh, we were selling it to business owners who already had businesses. So the business owner who had customers they would use our product and uh, as long as they have more customers and they use both of our products everyone gets cut out of it uh, the, the product is a bit difficult to explain but 
that that's a, a simpler version of it. So uh, just to give an example, so about the product that we had, uh, it's uh, it's like you know uh, actual mall where you get so many multiple vendors, uh, from like fashion to uh, like all sorts of vendors where you get like restaurants, fashion, e-commerce, e uh, books. So imagine that as a digital mall. So your consultative approach was helping your customer fix their business model so that they could better use your product. Is that right? Right. So uh, essentially it is as long as they are able to get more customers and they succeed in, in like a mutual business, uh, we get more revenue. Okay. And then what was the end result? Like how many new customers did they end up getting? And then how what did that translate for, for you in terms of revenue? So uh, I think they were able to get from one to 10 uh, franchise within a few months uh, for, for their restaurants. Uh, and I think as they were able to get 20% uh, more footfall from each uh, franchise. So that, that was the outcome. And then how much do you make then? If they get 20% more, then how much does your company make? So our cut is about one to five uh, percent, depending on like how consumer use it uh, and what products under or under our like under the the product that we have. So if they are using coupons, then they sometimes it's one to five percent, and depending on the merchant, uh, it varies. Okay, got it. All right. So uh, for feedback for this one, so I think I think. The first, being able to easily explain the product and or the customer situation would be helpful just so we can get a better context of like what you were doing from a account management CSM perspective. And then it also helps us understand your business model behind it as well. And I know you tried to simplify it, but I think by simplifying it, it doesn't give me enough context as to what you were doing, right? And how you were helping. Because then you were talking about digital mall, and then you mentioned something about they went from one to 20 franchises, right? Which which makes it confusing now because I'm like, now how do I, how do I marry that with what your CSM skill set is? Right, because now I'm trying to understand. Okay, how does this work? How does this translate for me in my business? So, what what you're saying is, if I'm your CSM, if a customer buys the product and feels like they're not getting the right use out of it, then you will take a consultative approach to do whatever it takes to help them get that usage. Right, um, and then I think how you did that was to help change their business model to expand into different franchises, which then led to five to 10% revenue for you based on their business expansion. Am I understanding that correctly? Right, so uh, basically uh, I would say, so for example, let's say I'm interviewing for the FinTech client, right? And uh, I think their client base is uh, D2C uh, commerce clients, right? So let's say if I have information that, you know, this product is very much uh, sort of in demand in this country, and I suggest that the client on when any of the call that I'm having, right? So that's sort of a consultative approach. And now they explore that territory and they understand, okay, this is actually true and there's a lot of demand. They experiment that uh, whatever I suggested and they are successful at it. So that's how, like, even that you are not recommending to use my product, but you're allowing client to success su succeed. So as long as client is succeeding, ultimately they'll use your own product. Uh, if, if your product helps them do that, right? Like they right. can be independent events, correct? 
Like it doesn't always work like that, right? Just because my business is growing, it doesn't mean that your business is growing with my business all the time, right? Because it's, yeah. it's not always dependent. So making sure that we're able to draw those connections will be helpful. And then also just make sure you have those numbers ready in terms of like what you actually gain from that for your company. Because you were like, oh, it ranges from 5% to 10% depending on the coupon and such. But then that doesn't tell me like how much you actually got out of this, right? Like what was your real impact for your company? Because to me, 5%, it could be nothing, right? Like what if your initial contract was like $100,000? So you're saying like you made five grand, right? Like that's not super, that's not great. Okay, the, so like display the exact numbers, right? Exact yeah, at the end. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. One of the unique parts of this role here at Loop is that you will be managing the new customer onboarding uh, when you are assigned as their CSM. So what is your unique or special approach to customer onboarding? And how do you ensure a very, uh, how do you ensure a great uh, and smooth process as well as high customer satisfaction? Yeah, so uh, that's uh, actually a very really great question. So uh, like I mentioned, my uh, background, or if you can see my background is very uh, versatile. So I come from, marketing role, I come from a strategy consulting role, I come from customer success role. So uh, what I excel at, excel is at, you know, making this onboarding calls as personal as, as possible. So I would like to understand uh, like what industry the client is in, what's their business model and personalizing, personalize the onboarding call, explain the features uh, which are beneficial to my client and how it's going to solve their problems, how it's going to go, uh, like meet the expectations of the client and uh, set the onboarding goal accordingly. So uh, again, my unique approach would be personalization. Okay, can you give me an example? So uh, for, for example, let's say uh, your one of the product is, you know, setting up multiple accounts in different countries, right? So uh, let's say if you, if you have... Uh, uh, a client who is looking to expand uh, uh, like its e-commerce business into let's say western part of the world so i would just you know try to understand uh, what features can be applicable to the client specifically uh, what's the regulations in those countries how it can what what type of uh, savings could they have uh, how, how they can you know save time on uh, using our product and you know launch their different products into different markets immediately or you know in a faster pace so that's how i would approach so that's a personalization so it's not a typical or a same onboarding session with every client okay can you give me something more unique because it seems like for every client we have you would you know want to make sure that you can set up their accounts so is there something more unique that you have done for one of your clients so, uh, like, it, uh, so I don't typically come from a SaaS background. So, uh, it's sometimes, uh, like, what I did was categorize every uh, customer that we had into categories. So, let's say if my customer came from a retail, let's say my customer came from uh, a fashion. So, I would sort of uh, categorize each and every customer's onboarding call uh, based on where they came from, based on what industry they're in, uh, and based on, you know, like what's the sort of profile of a customer? And then depending on the industry that they come from, how does that change your approach? So uh, it, like based on the features that we have, I would uh, like to know more about the features as well before I can answer this. So uh, it, it depends on the features that we are providing. So sometimes all the features are not applicable to everyone. A uh, few of them are applicable to a particular set of industries. Some of them are applicable to uh, a different industry. For example, let's say you are able to open multiple accounts, right, as, as a part of uh, of your feature. But sometimes a, your customer might be just operating in a single country and they just want to use your credit card, which is uh, which is one of your product uh, for lending or for borrowing. So I would not even introduce that feature right away. 
uh, I would just talk about the credit card, which is going to be useful for them and how uh, how much they can, you know, save on uh, through when they go through you and borrow money from your from your uh, line of account. So this is just a simple example of how it would work. But again, I would need like much more information before I can sort of uh, give my personalized onboarding session. Okay, okay, cool. Um, okay, so for the feedback on this one, uh, in, this, in this example, I was asking you to talk about something you've done in the past. So you don't have to worry about, you know, picking something for, for my company. You can just talk about a, a really unique approach that you've done for one of your customers, right? Um, so you don't have to uh, treat this one like a hypothetical, but I like that you were thinking of it in that regard. So that was very good. Um, and then you want to make sure that your approach is, is different than what other people would, would want to mention, right? Like I think setting up accounts, accounting for different countries, it's probably going to be something that a lot of people would want to make sure that they consider. Um, and then I think you were alluding to it, but didn't quite get to it, which was like, you like to categorize your, your customers when you get them based on industries and then you personalize your approach based on that. Okay. But then when I asked you for an example of like, okay, if, how does one industry over another personalize your onboarding experience or differentiate between different customers, right? Um, and then you just kind of mentioned the same thing about like setting up accounts. Um, so if, if, you have a, if you have another example of when, when it did matter, like for, for you, and how that was able to turn into like a really great win, uh, that would be a, a, a really good story to include. Okay. So uh, I would like to state this example. So essentially see onboarding is sort of an exam or a terminology used in a SaaS industry, right? But let's say if I'm coming from marketing industry, essentially how a personalized approach you have uh, in sort of closing a client. So. When I was working at a marketing agency and when we had a sort of an, uh, like a lead uh, or a reference, I used to always go to like uh, research the client first, sort of find out how can we create a uh, like personalized marketing agency or a, uh, for a sort of personalized marketing campaign for that company and uh, involve in that in into that proposal. Uh, rather than just going emailing giving a core call that we we have achieved this uh, we can do this for you but it's it was sort of a customized approach that's that's basically i would like to say yeah and then what was that customized approach so it depends on like what the client is right so uh, let's say if it's a website client so you want to make sure uh, you research the industry as well uh, of how others are performing, and then you recommend a way, uh, like a website structure based on, uh, based on that, uh, like how unique it can be. Yeah. Okay. And then, if you wanted to draw the parallels for them, because this is SaaS based, right? You could say similarly, um, if we were onboarding a another customer from a from a similar industry that I already currently manage, one of the things that I could do as part of their onboarding process is I could come prepared to one of our first meetings with example templates or certain use cases of how some of our other customers in similar in, in the same industry as them are successfully utilizing different features within our product to making sure they're getting the most value or you could even talk about how you know a new feature may be coming that would be super relevant for their particular industry because you're segmenting your customers for example by industry right so like right. that's one of those powerful examples you can share as uh, if you wanted to tie it back to SaaS. So using your example from your marketing business, right? When you onboard a new marketing client, depending on the product that they use, in this case, one of them was website only, e-commerce. You came prepared with with uh, other example templates, media, uh, marketing campaigns that have been extremely successful for some of your other website only e-commerce customers. And you're, you know, the the customer was super impressed. They were so happy that they choose chose you as an agency, right, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then, or I don't know, they they ended up going with one of your recommendations for their first campaign, and it was a huge success, right? They only spent 
whatever, 500,000, but they ended up increasing sales that year by, you know, 40% or something like that. Oh, does every story need to have like a figure attached to it? Because sometimes uh, uh, even though like it, it can be a successful outcome, but sometimes there is no figures involved. Like we can close the um, client, but not, it's not like a, we not earn all the time, much. but it does make it more powerful when you have them. Not all the time, but it is more yeah. powerful if you have some type of result that, that could be quantified, right? Because it's better than just saying, and the customer loved it. Yeah, okay. Sounds right, good. it's like, okay, but did it, well, but did it work? Was it good, right? Yeah, like, okay. yeah. Did you make more money, right? Like, did they stay, right? Like, I mean, you don't need to have uh, numbers if, uh, you know, if you're talking about a customer that was going to churn and you saved them, right? That one doesn't necessarily need to have a number. Right, right, makes makes sense. But every other thing that you can do from a, that would be good kind of needs a number, right? Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Which actually leads me to my very next question. And thank you, um, Candy, in the chat for suggestions and things as well. Okay. Can you? Let's go with. Let's go with. Okay, as a customer success manager, how would you modify your approach for some of our new customers that are that have just signed on to use our product versus some of our old legacy customers? So, uh, first of all, I would like to understand what was the approach uh, at the moment, and then based on uh, the feedback from the customers, uh, I would like to you know modify it, but. Uh, without knowing the current approach, uh, it would be difficult to say how how I can modify. It. No, no, no. So, um, I'm so imagine you're now working for me at my company as a customer yeah. success yeah, manager, yeah, yeah. and you're going to be responsible for a, a mixture of accounts. So you're going to get some net new customers who have just right. agreed to sign contract with us, and then you're also going to be given some of our legacy customers as well. So, how are you going to? modify your approach and how would you work with these two different types of customers so uh obviously when uh, if you're joining as a new uh you want to introduce yourself to the old customers uh first of all uh, you know check by what what uh, how are they performing with your product uh introduce yourself accordingly uh and don't jump into you know right away saying you be, become a consultant or don't jump in right away and say okay this is our new feature but you know slowly gradually get to and get into the conversation however when it comes to like new customers you want to uh be in the front foot uh make sure you are like uh getting to know them getting to know their business uh and uh, you know explaining everything of like what values you are going to create for them through our product And then what would you do for some of our legacy customers, our older customers? So, uh, like I mentioned, like for older customers, you don't want to, you know, uh, like jump in right away, but you want to gradually, uh, uh, like le leap in, uh, understand their business, uh, uh, and, you know, s s go, go on from there. Like, how are they using your product? It's like, also like understand the data uh, of whatever is available. Uh, understand how are they performing with your with our products like what features are they using uh how are they using it like are they you know successful at it are they satisfied at it? you want to see at the metrics uh and you know if you see your finding recommendation you want to start from there rather than just you know uh coming as a the new guy okay perfect at the end there that was great right um, one of the major differences is that you actually have data sp specifically around usage between mm -hmm. old versus new. And so when you're coming in to talk with your older customers, you would want to make sure you're doing your research and your analysis beforehand, making sure that you truly understand their customer profile, how much they're, they're using the product, how many licenses they have, what features that they like, what they don't like, and then um, things like that. Um, so that part is excellent. And then the other thing you may want to add is thinking about how uh, you would want to be proactive and future 
and future looking with some of your older customers as well, right? Knowing that they've been using you for a while, maybe they're up for renewal soon. You may want to be looking at the product roadmap, talking with engineering, right? Figuring out what features are coming, which ones maybe are, you know, being fixed or modified, ones that would be really good for their particular industry that they don't, that they don't, right. they, they don't even know about, right? Like that way you can add value for them even though they've right. already had a previous CSM, right? So right. M- make sure you're also sprinkling in some of these additional ways where you can be unique rather than just like the standard, you know, uh, general stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Makes sense? Makes sense. Yeah, yeah totally. Cool. cool, 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 cool. And then um, also one thing that'll be helpful too. So for these hypothetical questions, they're super tricky, right? Because you don't work here yet. And so like you mentioned on the first time, right? You were like, well, you know, like, I don't really know what you guys have been doing. So like, I don't know yet. I'll have to see the data. Makes sense, right? Obviously you don't work here, but because it's an interview, your answer needs to be longer than that. And so what you can do is you can say, you know, I I don't work there yet. So I don't really know what the data is, but like some of the data I would want to look at would be X, Y, and Z. And then based on that data, if it says this, then I would want to do this with my customers. Or if it says this, I would want to do this with my customers. So even though you don't have the data, right, you can still walk me through what you would do, which shows me how good you are as a CSM, right? It shows me all the different situations that you're comfortable with or that you've dealt with in in the past, right? Because um, even though you don't have the data, it, it doesn't matter, right? You can say, yeah, I don't have the data, but let's just say this customer isn't utilizing the product enough right? That would tell me X, Y, and Z. I like to fix that by doing X, Y, and Z. Or maybe they are using the product a lot. Well, I want to make sure that not not only do, do they renew, but I want to upsell them, okay? So when I'm thinking about upsells, I want to be doing X, Y, and Z research. I want to be talking with engineering. I want to be blah, 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 blah. Then I'm going to schedule a call, you know, six months before their renewal is up so I can be proactive about blah, 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 blah. Or I want to go to some conferences, figure out what some of our biggest competitors are doing. What are our biggest threats, right? Maybe we're too, maybe we're like the really expensive option in the market. I don't know, right? Like, yeah, you can yeah. Still play Understood. out some things that yeah, show yeah. me your skills. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, you have to be on top, be proactive, uh, not only just learn about the customers, but about their competitors as well uh about yeah. our competitors like the pricing wise like you mentioned that go to the conferences learn what they are offering uh different from you so yeah it totally mm-hmm. makes sense yeah yeah okay cool all right let's try this one um imagine one of our customers is considering terminating their contract how would you handle this so yeah so whenever uh that sort of customer comes in it's always a tricky situation uh, but before anything, I just want to understand what went wrong, uh, go deeper into the problem. Like, is it about uh, their own internal problem that they're running off the budget? Uh, is the problem regarding they found a new uh, or a different partner to work with? Or uh, is it something totally else? So I would just want to understand uh, uh, what the problem is and then offer a solution that, okay, if it's about, you know, someone else offering you better features, someone else offering you something that you like better, we definitely want to work uh, and improve upon you and we want to, you know, uh, offer you the same features. Uh, if it's about the price, only then you want to offer, let's say, discount, but not discount in a way that, uh, like, the next bill will be discounted, but let's say offer additional features at a discounted rate. So at the same time, you also stop selling. Or, uh, you know, worst case scenario, let's say you want to part ways, uh, you also want to part ways in a way that, you know, you don't leave a negative impression. You want to uh, say, okay, we, we uh, didn't have the right fit at the moment. We see different directions and we sort of want to move on. But you never leave uh, a customer unhappy. That's the end goal. See, that was great. Uh, that was really good because you walk me through those three different scenarios and what you would do, right? If we're too expensive, you would do this. If it's a, if it's through the features, you would do this. And then if it turns out we're not a good fit, like how do we ultimately end our relationship but still do it in, 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 in a way that's good for business? So that was awesome. That was perfect. That's exactly what you would want to do in some of these hypothetical situations because, you know, you don't want to be like, well, you know, like I don't work there. So, you know, I don't know what customer you have if it were to terminate. So 
sorry. Right. So th th that, that was awesome. That was great. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Let's try Albert's question. Um, what company do you think does customer success really well and why? Uh, so sorry. Can you repeat the question? What yeah, company? which which company do you think does customer success really well and why? Oh, okay. Which company does customer success really well? Uh, the... <laughs> That's a good question. So uh, for me, I think customer success is relatively a new, uh, like a role. So I haven't been following the companies that is primarily focused on customer success. Uh, but I am a part of uh, many account managing groups and customer success groups uh, where, you know, uh, I, would, I sort of follow what works and what doesn't work uh, in a company. And uh, so what I have learned is what works in a customer success domain is uh, being proactive, actively listening to your customers, making sure you're having that long lasting relationship with your customers where you have the opportunity to uh, upsell and reduce churn. Uh, to be honest, I didn't okay. know that does customer success just to uh, sort of improvise the answer. Okay, no, that's fine. Um, uh, what do you think makes someone very good versus just average as a customer success manager? Uh, like I mentioned earlier, it's about being proactive, actively listening and uh, having that uh, impactful relationship with your customers. But the more important thing is having that consistency uh, because you can do this uh, for a month, you can do this for two months, but doing this day in and day out, that's that's what's important. So, uh, And that's what differentiates because uh, uh, like th this is dealing with customers. Sometimes uh, you, you are having good days, sometimes you're having bad days, but having the same mindset every day, it's it's a difficult and that's what differentiates between a great customer success professional and a, probably an average customer success professional. Okay, yeah, that's that's good. That's I think that's really what they're looking for, right? Is like the difference between great and average. Like, yes, you know, proactive is kind of what everyone will say. Um, so I like the consistency piece and, and, and that thing you added at the end. And then the only other thing you may want to be proactive about is like sharing an example of a time when you've done this, right? You can be like, you know, there was reminds me of a time where blah, 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 oh, blah. Okay. blah. Yeah, always give an example, right? Yeah. Unless it's a hypothetical question, then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's go with uh, let's go with this audience submitted question. Um, sure. Let's try. Yeah, let, let's go with the first one. Um, what is your cross collaboration approach with other internal teams like sales, product, operations, support to make sure that uh, our customer has a great experience? Oh, yeah, the fantastic question. So, uh, I would just like to say that, you know, uh, throughout my six to seven years of professional journey, I have worn multiple hats from being the business development guy, uh, like I mentioned, being a marketeer, uh, again, being uh, account manager, customer success guy. So I understand uh, like where the customer's journey started and how that customer customer came to me. So, uh, and also I work with uh, different cross-functional teams from, you know, business development to uh, product teams. Uh, just to, you know, and identify the customer's journey and how our business, our product can increase that value uh, throughout the journey of a customer. So I have, uh, and when I was working, working at the marketing agency, I worked with a team of SEO, I worked with a team of uh, uh, digital marketers, I worked with content creators. Uh, when I was working in the, in the cashback industry, again, I worked with engineers, I worked with developers to uh, identify, you know, feedback from customers, pass it on to them. Uh, improve the product. I also work with business development team, okay, uh, to profile the customers because you know everyone is not your customers. You want to make sure you're having the right or onboarding the right customers as well. Uh, and again, so when I was also uh, like a co-founder last year, I've also done more than 120 dis customer discovery calls. Uh, and 
also worked with uh, you know uh, like people from different departments so overall i have uh, like a extensive experience working with uh, teams from different departments Okay, but what is your unique or collaborative approach that you take to ensure that all these different teams are able to work cohesively um, and successfully for our customers? So uh, it's it's also being uh, adaptive to the culture that you're working with. Uh, that's one of the most important because you want to understand uh, where they are coming from. Uh, at the same time, there are also technological tools that helps in communication, uh, making sure the deadlines are met. So uh like the the work environment isn't uh like half hazard or isn't like everyone is depending on everyone else uh but you also want to be you know take the ownership of your own tasks so as long as you are doing that uh, you're also showing that uh you can do your job and you know setting the example for others as well Okay, um, so this one's more of a soft skills focused question, right? Like how do you ensure great collaboration with all the internal teams to make sure you're able to deliver for your customers and for your clients? Um, and so uh, it's, good to, it's good to mention that, that you know, with your background, you work with all these different teams before, that's great. Um, but then of course you have to talk about what is your unique approach to ensure that everyone's able to work closely together. And so they're gonna be looking for things like you're proactive. Um, examples of times where you've had to handle and remove roadblocks or come to compromises or how you've been able to solve resourcing issues and constraints um, or how you handle when, you know, fire drills come up out of nowhere, etc. or how you're able to balance customer expectations with what your company is able to deliver. So not over-promising and under-delivering, et cetera, et cetera, right? So those are some of the things that they're going to be listening for um, mm -hmm. and looking for whenever you talk about cross-functional collaboration internally within your customer, uh, w w within your company. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you everyone for the questions. These were great. Let's everyone give him a round of applause. This was awesome. We ran through like six or seven, eight, eight, eight questions today. So this was great. And, and thank you everyone for, for tuning in. And yeah, if you want additional tips and tricks, there's the Albert List uh, YouTube channel. And then of course I have my own YouTube channel as well. Uh, if you want more interviewing things. So thanks everyone. All right. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you guys. Yep. Thank you, Corey. And thank you, G10 for joining us. And thank you all for coming on today. Uh, we have many more events going on the remainder of this week, as well as into the weeks after. So please feel free to join us for those. We also have other mock interviews coming up, including the 100th featuring yours truly. So please join us for all of those. We'll be following up over email and we hope to see you soon. Thanks everybody and have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.